Well, I've said it before and I'll say it again. The stories that these old engines could tell if the story could be told. Yeah, I guess you could say I've been fooling with these old limbs for quite a while. And there's a story in every one of these crankcases. And we're getting her done here on the East Coast, Arkansas. Shop Dog Sam. I'm going to show y'all how to get one of these cylinder sleeves out of one of these McCormick Deering uh, International Model M. This happens to be a one and a half horsepower. This also works for the bigger size also. This is just the way I do it. It works. And I, I have took, uh, I've, prob I've probably took 20 or 30 of these out this way. And uh, I've just, I've had no problem with it yet. I will give you a little tip on the get-go right here. If you're working on one of these, do not put anything in this notch right here. Don't put a pry bar in there and try to pry that loose. That's not what that's for. Uh, just do not pry on that because this is a, a thin casting on some blocks. That's not, that's not what that is is for is not to be prying against. Just do not do it. Don't even entertain the idea. What the setup I've got here is four bolts and 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 you should take the time to get a ruler and set all bolts at the same height. It don't matter what the what the height is. If you if you have your head bolts in your engine then you also can cut four standoffs four pieces of pipe don't matter what length they are just so that they clear the threads on the longest bolt all of those be the same length and you put one on each head bolt if you use that the bolt this year like this then this is just a piece of angle iron that happens to be a five inch there use what you got and all I done is just cut a piece of angle iron and drilled a hole in the center, half inch in this instance. And then I just got another piece of flat stock to put there as support because that's not very thick. That's all, that's all you need to go there, except uh, another washer. And then you, you kind of want to put three or four washers there so that they will turn. So you don't have a, a galled situation. Put a little oil right there. Those, those have got some oil on them. And the other, the other end is a, that's just an all thread. Goes from one end to the other. And it's got a, uh, about a three eighths thick round washer there and a spacer and a couple of nuts locked together on that end. And then I've got some just spacer washers. This just fits against the back of the cylinder, flat. The hole in the center is big enough to clear all of that, and that's the way that looks right there. When you get that thing all put together, and 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 now you can you can machine you something if you want to, but this right here will get it done. And what you do, what you do is you poke that up from the bottom. You poke that thing up through the inner, all the way to the top, like that, and put all of this, you stack all of this right here on top of all of that. That'll come up from the bottom, put, your, put that on there, put that on there, put your washers on there. And there's just a uh, half inch uh, nut. And all of that's, that's uh, just all sandwiched together. Push that up against the bottom of the cylinder and just tighten this up right here. And now right in yonder, I'm going to move the camera so we can see that uh, the edge of that cylinder. Let's move a close up. The, the, the edge of that sleeve it is right in that area right there if you want to keep a lookout for it we'll see can we see it come undone and you just tighten up this right here 
and you will need to lock a couple of wrenches together there to get some torque sometimes it takes quite a, quite a bit and you just tighten this apparatus up and what you're doing is you're putting you're pulling on the back side of that sleeve out this away when you get a when you get a fair amount of pressure on here if it ain't moved there's just no need to break anything uh, and see that's that's quite a bit of pressure I'm going to reposition the block and then I'll show you how to relieve that tension right there now with the block set back like this here upright again so we can kind of see what we're doing and I'm going to hit this I'm going to hit this back part here with a small hammer and a pipe I'll show you how to do that but but uh, let's uh, let's snug this up just a little bit more and you see the setup here it's quite quite easy nothing elaborate and just tighten, tighten that up and to get a little more torque on that thing right there just <clears throat> that's pretty tight uh, that's enough for the time being you know some should have come loose the uh, uh, the next step that most people would do would be to put some fire to it and you know me I don't like to put fire to cast iron so we're going to relieve it we're going to move the camera around yonder and I'll show you what we're going to do now what I what I got right there is a railroad bar one of them pry bars and you always try that first because it's the easy way and what you want to do is poke that up in the back under and you want to hit the back part of that washer firmly okay let's look at it there goes that train but do y'all see that oh yeah it moved let's get her on out of there and all we done is we poked it with that big old long, long railroad bar there you know that railroad bar it's a pinch bar you can move a railroad train car with that thing now let's get on to this cylinder let's see if we can get her on out of there because it moved it, it really it moved but it sure is tight but it's a coming I can I can I can vouch for it without you know what I mean you can drag in you can drag in your big old press and you know your high priced tools and you actually can drag in the torch you can set fire to the hopper I mean there's a multitude of ways to get these cylinders out but and I've tried them all uh, don't get me wrong I ev everything ever you know in years gone by I've, I've uh, this was pretty tight to be, be quite honest with you but I will tell you something one time I built an engine you know bought it as a running engine that wasn't running and I decided to go ahead and clean that engine up and paint it and oh it was pretty and I built that engine got it all put together and when I started that engine up water was running out of the back of the hopper back under back of the cylinder out the out the, out the where the oil comes out back under water was coming out of it now what's happened now is I've I've pulled that cylinder as far as I can 
the end plates has come up against the back of the housing see so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna bump it just a little bit uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna take a look they ain't no need to bump it no more you know when you know something don't need it you don't need to do it let's just get her out of there take all this loose break her down Take that nut loose right down in there. Because at this point, the cylinder is pulled up to where the taper part starts. When it gets up there to the back. Up to there. See that cylinder's loose? Now this one uh, had been setting for some time and the hopper was full of uh, dirt and all kinds of, uh, well, we don't know yet, but we will know just in a little bit what was in there. Just break it all down, cause we done with this. And if you're working on all these engines, don't think that you can get along without having to take this out. Y'all see that? The hopper is full of dirt. And the reason that that little notch is in that housing is to clear this oil pipe fixture. But you see right there, we got that cylinder out of there. You know, what more can be done? Now, when, you, when we clean all of this up, I'll put an O-ring in the cylinder in the back of the housing. Nothing goes up here. You don't put anything in there. I say I, you don't. I usually put a little bit, if there's any place on any of these old engines that I use silicone, I'll use just a sparingly amount right around here. Probably don't need it, but you know, I do it. But we'll, we'll dig all of that. And you never know what you're going to find in there. I have found wrenches, I have found parts of oilers. Uh, you just never know what you're going to dig out of there. But you know, we got her out of there. Now we'll, uh, that oiler pipe there is broke off. We'll get that out. We'll clean her up to see if it's any good. You know, it may just be scrap hard. From here on the east coast of Arkansas, one more cylinder. Hey, there's an empty space there. Let's just put this block right up in there, you know. Yeah. I guess you could say I've been fooling with these old limbs for a long time. I just suck it there after them Maytags. <laughs>